What is up, guys? It's Cartman here, and you're watching WGS TV. You have warped your way into another episode of WGS TV right here on YouTube.com slash Russell Gamer. I'm the Russell Gamer, Double B, Bunny Boudreaux. This is going to be the NX <laughs> review for the week of April 30th, 2015. We start off with Kevin Owens coming out to call out Sami Zayn. And basically, a big fallout. If you guys don't remember what happened last week with Sami Zayn attacking Kevin Owens after his matchup with Alex Riley, it's basically a, a big follow up and a big lead into what they were going to be doing. Uh, and uh, Kevin Owens would call him out Sami Zayn in response to what happened. And William Regal would come out, and basically, what what, what would turn this turn into would also same as Zane uh, uh, coming out to actually get involved is basically kind of a role reversal. If you remember when Owens kind of conned his way into the the NXT Championship, that's what they had done with Sami Zayn. Now, so at May twentieth, at the next NXT NXT Takeover, they don't have an elaborate name for it yet, but I'm pretty sure by the time May twentieth runs rolls around, they will have a uh, an uh, an elaborate name for NXT TakeOver. Um, it's going to be for the championship. So it's going to be really interesting to see um, what they will do with these two guys come TakeOver. Now, Enzo Amore and Colin Cassidy would take on Blake and Murphy in a non-title match. Um, it was an okay match. Um, not, I can't really say anything bad about it. Um I still don't understand why the announcers don't recognize Amore and Colin Cassidy's finisher as the rocket launcher, the one that uh, the Midnight Express used to use. And, and I don't understand why they don't call it what it is, that it's a rocket launcher. But um, anyway, they would use that and uh, it would pick up the win over uh, Blake and Murphy. Bailey was on lookout because apparently her headbands and her shirt weren't missing, and apparently we would find out um, soon as uh, soon as that that apparently Emma decided to steal all of uh, Bailey's stuff, and, and they're trying to write some sort of weird new angle, I guess, now to for for Emma and what they're doing uh, now. Why they would have her steal her stuff? I don't know, but she would end up taking on Dana Brooke. Dana Brooke, I wasn't impressed with with her debut. You know, she didn't look really crisp. She didn't look, but then again, it was really her first match. So I, I would think that it would take some time to start developing and working in. And she looked a little bit better in this match, but then again, she worked with uh, she worked with Bailey, and Bailey we know is a good worker. And um, I gotta say, it was a much better matchup than what she had with Blue Pants, to say the least. Because um, what she did with Blue Pants was kind of deplorable. Now with um, with Bailey, she kind of stepped it up a little bit. But again, it's probably because of the person she worked with. Um, Emma would come out and kind of cause a distraction, allowing Bailey to hit her modified uh, Future Shock and pick up the win. Um, and again, they're building up something with, with these two. Hiteo Tommy and Adam Rose. I really don't know what they're doing with Adam Rose as of late. It's really been kind of confusing because at one point, they're, it looked like they were trying to turn him heel and have him break away from the Exotic Express. And then next week, they kind of chunk all that out the window. So what exactly are they doing now with Adam Rhodes? That's the big question. Are they going to, is it going to be lost in the mid card shuffle? That's what it appears to be. Cause apparently the exotic express gimmick is, it may have been over on the NXT crowd, but apparently it's not over on the main roster crowd. And that's the problem. Now this matchup, Rose kind of jobbed a bit to Hideo Itami. Itami would hit the shotgun kick on Rose to pick up the win. And that was pretty much it. It was a pretty quick match. Um, William Regal would also make the announcement that at NXT TakeOver that uh, there would be a triple threat number one contenders match between Hideo Itami, Tyler Breeze, and Finn Balor. And that 
should really be interesting to watch. So, man, they, they're already they're already signing up some good matches for May twenty for the takeover. You know, if Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens headlining it for the NXT title wasn't enough, now we have a triple threat number one contenders match with three of the top talents in NXT in Hideo Itami, Tyler Breeze, and Finn Balor. That should be interesting. Speaking of something that should be interesting, because um, I know I don't have it in the uh, in my lineup, but it's something that I saw. We saw a Finn Balor vignette. I'm, I'm sorry, not Finn Balor. Uh, Baron Corbin, I apologize. Um, and that's why I probably should have had it in my lineup, and appara but apparently I didn't. Uh, Baron Corbin would do one of his little vignettes. They would show little vignettes about him, and Rhino re would respond. So are we seeing it now? A matchup in the works for Baron Corbin and Rhino? That should be epic. And I hope it goes a little bit better than what they did with Baron Corbin and Bull Dempsey. By the way, we haven't seen Bull Dempsey in a few weeks, so I wonder what's going on with him. Yeah. But uh, if we're going to see Corbin and Rhino at NXT TakeOver on May 20, that should be awesome because if you think about it you have an experienced guy like rhino who's been nothing but smash mouth smash mouth smash mouth throughout his career and we got a young guy baron corbin with almost a similar style to rhino and this is a positive for both guys especially for baron corbin if you look at it from his point of view, getting to work with someone as experienced in the business, in the industry, as Rhino, is really going to do nothing but positive things for his career. I mean, think about the learning experience Baron Corbin can have working with a guy as seasoned in the industry as Rhino is, because Rhino has been everywhere. He's been to EC, he's been ECW. I think he was the last ECW uh, World of Weight Champion, if I'm not mistaken. And he's been in WWE, he went to TNA, and I think he had a brief stint in Ring of Honor. I am not sure. But now he's in NXT. He's getting to work with a lot, a lot of the young guys and getting it. You know, he's going to get a chance to work with Baron Corbin and a guy who's on that precipice of superstardom because Baron Corbin has that look. And I believe this learning experience experience he could have with Rhino if they really do go through with a match with them on May 20 at NXT TakeOver should be awesome. To quote the myth, it should be awesome. Um, Becky, uh, now back to the my, my lineup, Becky Lynch and Sarah Dawson. Um, I don't know too much about Sarah Dawson. I'm pretty sure somebody out there probably really knows a lot more about Sarah Dawson than I do. Um, but this is basically a squash match with Becky Lynch locking on her, her arm bar to, uh, to pick up the win. And then we would go to the main event, which was made backstage in a sense where, uh, Sami Zayn was doing the contract signing for his matchup at NXT takeover. Riley comes in, Alex Riley said he wanted a match and Regal said, you're fresh out of opportunities. And then Sam Zing would stand up. Well, how about a match against me? I need a warm up match for a uh, takeover. And how about that? And Riley agreed to it. And the matchup, let's just say when Riley took on Kevin Owens, it was kind of a couple of squash matches in a sense. And he worked a much better match with Sami Zayn. So I guess maybe the, uh, the whole purpose of having Owens squash Riley is to make Owens look like this unbeatable guy. I would assume. Um, yeah, because why would they have Riley suck against Owens and actually have him come out and work a, a somewhat decent match with Sami Zayn? Now, the reason why I bring up Kevin Owens is Kevin Owens was on commentary during this match, and uh, Owens even tweeted out that the uh, commentator should be calling the match, and be, me being a commentator for seven years... Yeah, I kind of agree with that. You should be calling and describing the action. Uh, hint Michael Cole, hint JBL, hint Byron Saxton, hint Jerry the King Lawler. 
Mm, maybe. Um, and I'm just saying that from my point of view. That's my perspective on it. But Owens is not really... I don't know. I, I really don't know what to say. And Kevin Owens on commentary, I don't know. I'm not sold on it. I'm not sold on that. I think they need to work more on his speaking skills and whatnot because he really didn't put anything over. He didn't even put over himself. He just sat there like, I'm Kevin Owens. You you should respect me. I'm, I'm Now, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to diss Owens, the guy, because I really don't want him to come over here and kick my ass. I really don't want that to happen. But what I'm saying is, you know, he's got good in-ring work. There is no doubt about that and how he's established. Now, I understand the transition from Steen to Owens. Steen was a little had a bit a little bit more an elaborate vac vocabulary, if you kind of get what I'm saying, that he can't use in WWE. And I can understand that, but I, I think they need to work on it a little bit more because I wasn't really convinced. Now, the way they would have this match end is they would have uh, Kevin Owens attack Sami Zayn. Therefore, it would result in disqualification. And then Owens finally gets to do what he's been trying to do all this time and powerbomb Alex Riley against the ring apron. Now, how long will they write him off because of that? I don't know. Will they use this to put Riley back on the commentary table? It's a possibility. It's a possibility. But who knows what they're going to be doing now with Riley. Um, anyway, guys, my overall score on NXT this week, I'm going to give it a four out of five. It was a solid show. Um, best match of the night. Honestly, I'm going to have to give it. I'm going to give it to Sami Zayn and Alex Riley in the main event. I thought it was a decent match. Um, I have to look look back at my notes a little bit. I apologize about that. Because um, I was going to consider Enzo Moore and Colin Cassidy taking on Blake and Murphy for the title's best match of the night. But I think Zayn and Riley were just a little bit more. Because um, I think the only downer, I, want, I don't want to say too much of a downer with Kevin Owens on commentary. But... If you're going to be on commentary, you need to learn to put over your match without using the cuss words, Kevin Steen. Um, I really don't have a worse, worse set. I never really have a worse match or segment for, for NXT. Just for the point of saying that Kevin, I'm sorry, NXT is the saving grace of WWE. And I'm really looking forward to what they do on May 20th at NXT TakeOver. So on that note, guys and gals, what I want to know from you guys out there, the viewers and subscribers, your thoughts on NXT this week. What are your overall scores? What are your picks for best and worst match or segment of NXT this week? I definitely want to know what you guys out there have to say. Be sure you put your comments in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and favorite this video. WGSTV is on social media on Facebook, facebook.com slash WGSTV on Twitter at the Russell Gamer and on Instagram at the Russell Gamer. Be sure you check me out. And also, if you haven't yet, please subscribe to youtube.com slash Russell Gamer for more content like this in all of my Let's Plays, which you can check out in the annotations at the end of this video. And the links to the videos will be provided in the description box below. So with that being said, I'm the Russell Gamer. It'll be Billy Boudreaux saying we'll see you at the next Warp Zone. Okay, what is wrong with you?